morning. Uh, my name is Scott Harrison. Uh, I am with Accenture, and I'm uh, Accenture's uh, managing director responsible for uh, our Microsoft business. Uh, and you know, Microsoft and Accenture really have a unique relationship. We are first and best customers of one another. Uh, we, we, we push each other in terms of, of early adoption and at scale uh, use of one another's products uh, and services. But importantly, we also have a joint venture company between us, a company called uh, Avanade that, uh, that we created, uh, I guess now 17 years ago. Uh, and Avanade is the uh, market leader in providing uh, services around Microsoft's technology. So it's a joint venture now with uh, 30,000 men and women who are dedicated to providing this, uh, this uh, service around Microsoft technology. Um, what, what, as, uh, as Pat and I uh, uh, talked about uh, uh, the, the stories that we'll tell this morning, we're really going to do two things. We're going to share a view about hybrid cloud uh, and the hybrid cloud journey that we have been on, uh, as well as give a couple of very specific uh, customer examples so you can see how uh, hybrid cloud comes to fruition uh, in the market. Uh, Accenture, our core customer base that we serve is primarily the enterprise market. It's the Fortune <coughs> Global 2000, so it's all of the, uh, uh, the big enterprises that are out there. Uh, and we'll tell a couple of stories uh, of, uh, of implementing hybrid cloud uh, for, uh, for, some, for some of those companies. Uh, if I think about, uh, it was uh, uh, just over three years ago that Accenture and Microsoft announced the hybrid cloud initiative to go out and build a hybrid cloud platform. Uh, uh, the uh, Accenture Hyper Cloud solution for Microsoft Azure. And it's hard to remember three years ago in the, in the realm of cloud and just how fast things uh, uh, have, have been changing. Uh, but back then, enterprises were concerned about putting mission critical workloads out in the public cloud. There was very much a desire to say, uh, uh, you know, uh, so much of my workload is always going to stay in a private cloud environment uh, inside the four walls of my enterprise. Uh, and so we uh, uh, put our heads together with Microsoft to develop a solution that would enable us to seamlessly migrate and manage workloads from public cloud environments to private cloud environments. So it was underpinned, uh, obviously, on the public cloud side by Azure. Uh, and on the private cloud side at the time by uh, Azure PAC and Azure WAP. Uh, you know, this was uh, the, the, the state of technology three years ago when we did this. Uh, and, if you, and if you fast forward to now, uh, and obviously uh, 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 you know, the, the technology has advanced, uh, I think the market has evolved in terms of its trust of, of, of cloud. Uh, and so now we have Microsoft having announced Azure Stack, having uh, general availability and, uh, and, and taking orders for Azure Stack uh, out in the market. Uh, and we are looking forward to, uh, you know, to, to, to writing the next chapter uh, of our hybrid cloud story together. It's been great as we think about this next chapter of where the hybrid cloud story is going uh, to, uh, uh, to work with QTC uh, in, in, in writing this next chapter uh, of our hybrid cloud journey. Uh, and so with that introduction, I'm going to pass it over to, uh, to Pat. Pat's going to share a point of view about, uh, about where we see the hybrid cloud market, and then we'll come back and talk about a couple of examples. Great. Thanks, Scott. So let's talk about uh, hybrid cloud. Again, hi, I'm Pat Simpers from Avanade. Mm -hmm. um, our executive, I look after a lot of our cloud investments, uh, a lot of our cloud resources, and work very deeply with Microsoft and Azure and Azure Stack. Uh, but let's talk about hybrid cloud. So this is the collective view, if you will, of Accenture and Avanade. Uh, hybrid cloud to us means a couple very key important things. Uh, the top one, we might have heard five times so far this morning, and I assume we'll hear more software defined. It's critical. You have to have software defined. Part of software defined is having APIs and portals throughout that to your clouds that you can leverage. And those can be from an interactive perspective, programmatically, systematically. Those are critical elements as well. What those APIs and portals and that software defined gives your developers and your operators is a consistent experience from wherever those clouds might be. So consistency is important. And all of that leads to your ability, someone's ability to deploy things in a fit for purpose manner. And that could be across public cloud, it could be across your on-premises cloud, it can go into a hosted cloud or an edge scenario or anything between or combinations thereof. So cloud really kind of has those key characteristics, hybrid cloud, software defined, APIs and portals, consistent experience, and you can use them and deploy things in a fit for purpose manner. Now, let's take a look also at what that looks like from a, from a market perspective. 
Uh, Avanade commissioned a study earlier this year, and we survey a whole bunch of folks as we, these things work, right? We kind of collect the data uh, about what they're seeing, what their trends are, and where they're progressing as it relates to cloud. I won't drain all this. Looks like maybe the fonts got a little bit tweaked, but the, the, there's a couple of key data points here. Really what these bars represent is uh, yearly progression. You know, what, where are they now? Where are they looking in 12 months and then in 30, 36 months? And it's leveraging different technologies. And we go from the right to left, it's PaaS on the right, it's IaaS next, hosted data center and on-premises data center. And you see trends and things change and things shift. But the critical data point is you don't see on-prem or hosted going away. Maybe they're shifting as mixes change, as people leverage maybe more public cloud, and they get used to PaaS architectures and those sorts of things. But on-premises cloud is not going away, meaning hybrid is here to stay. And it's going to be here for a very long time. So to do that, you have to have the right tools and technologies. The other thing that we found is that people want integrated platforms. What this means is as they go to leverage this hybrid cloud, this thing called the hybrid cloud, they don't want to use a bunch of different technologies and stitch it together. And what the data points here really say is, um, do you want, you know, basically the question is, what's your plans in terms of leveraging technologies that are integrated across your various cloud deployments? That's kind of the summary. And you can see there an overwhelming majority, 57% strongly agree uh, and another 30% agree, so a whopper of the majority agree that they want systems or cloud that is consistent and aligned across wherever they're going to go deploy things, so across hybrid. So that means their public cloud, they want their public cloud, they want their private cloud, they want that hybrid experience to be consistent across systems. So that's a critical data point as you kind of think through what's the right way to go about delivering cloud to your clients or as you're consuming cloud, it really kind of eases that developer experience, your operator experience, you're not retooling or having a set of tools for one thing over here or something over there. You have that ability to use that common set of things from one to the other. So with that, let's, we're going to talk about a couple client examples of where we've done this and how we've been able to help them. All right, so uh, tag team here. The first client uh, example that I want to talk about uh, is uh, Freeport McMoran. And for those of you who may not know, Freeport McMoran is one of the world's largest uh, metals and mining natural resources companies based uh, in the U.S. down in, uh, in Phoenix. Uh, they operate uh, uh, mines and, uh, uh, and uh, different uh, uh, natural resources processing plants uh, all throughout the world. And you know, they, they had an issue when we talked with, uh, you know, when we talked with them. You don't think of, uh, of uh, uh, pulling metal ore out of the ground and processing it and things like that as a, as a terribly digitally enabled uh, kind of business. Uh, and in fact, the way Freeport McMoran was operating, the mining supervisor would come in at the beginning of a shift uh, and you know, the, the supervisor would get uh, paper-based reports that say, here's the various equipment that we have deployed, here are the various people operating the equipment, here's the plan for, uh, for the day. And as you can all imagine, right, as we all know, uh, as soon as that paper report is printed, uh, it becomes out of date almost immediately, right? And you've got a whole shift that you need to operate, uh, this big heavy equipment and heavy machinery, uh, often in very punishing environments that are very remote and very far away. In Freeport, a lot of, uh, a lot of the mines that they operate uh, are literally several miles underground. And so when you think about how do you dig digitally enable a mine that includes a mine shaft that goes two miles underground, uh, you know, that's not, there's no internet connectivity uh, two miles underground. So when you think about the, uh, the technology that you have there, it really is a case study that is tailor-made for a hybrid cloud environment. So how can you uh, enable uh, this, this uh, heavy equipment and heavy machinery with an IoT, uh, 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 an IoT solution to gather data from these sensors uh, and make that data and information available to uh, a mining supervisor so that the mining supervisor can then make decisions that are based on real-time information, uh, whether it's things that would impact productivity, whether it's things that would impact uh, safety, uh, whether it's about the people who are operating uh, this, uh, this equipment. So we developed a, a, a solution that, uh, that, um, uh, that, that did real-time data gathering from sensors that were attached to all of this uh, uh, heavy equipment, uh, uh, exposed that to the mining operators uh, in an application, uh, and that application relied on processing out at the edge 
uh, not, uh, not always internet connect, uh, connected, so you couldn't just go straight up to a public cloud uh, to do all this data processing. Uh, there would be periodic, uh, you know, you know, periodic uploads into, uh, into the public cloud for, uh, for analysis, for artificial intelligence, and things like that. But what this really did is it enabled uh, the frontline mining supervisors to, to run the mine based on current information. And funny story, when we were, uh, had done the proof of concept, uh, with Freeport McMoran. We were sitting in, uh, in a conference room with the CIO. We had a, a, a handful of, of machines that were wired and up and running, and we were demoing the, uh, the application. Uh, and uh, into the conference room came one of the mining supervisors, and you know, the CIO was very excited, wanted to show this mining supervisor, here's this application that we're developing. And, uh, and this man looked down and he says, wait, this, this is my mine right now, and he looked at it, and, I'm not a mining guy, so I don't know exactly what the indications were that he saw, but he excused himself very quickly to say, I think there's a problem with one of these crushers and I need to go take care of it now if this is really based on real-time information. And so it's, it's that kind of, uh, of a, business, uh, a business change and a digital transformation for a company that we don't think of as, uh, as normally a digital enabled company. Um, so that's, that's one example. I'll ask Pat to talk about uh, a second example. Uh, so the next one we're going to talk through here is a vehicle manufacturer. Um, they make both commercial and military vehicles. Uh, and really, you can think that the solution that they've got is really kind of an IoT-enabled uh, kind of analytics platform that takes care of the, the, the systems or tools that, or vehicles that they make and brings that data in. Uh, so it's a vehicle management application, right? And what they've been able to leverage using the hybrid cloud deployments is a common code base. Um, my builds are kind of get that here. Uh, a common code base that enables common operations and common scenarios with a common deployment architecture across both public and private. So if you think about it, again, commercial vehicles, military vehicles. The commercial vehicles they deploy this write this app, this vehicle management application, write that, deploy it, manage it, operate it up into public cloud. There's not necessarily sensitive data up there or anything like that. But when you deploy that exact same application that's now being used to monitor or manage military military vehicles, there's a little bit more sensitivity. So in that scenario, uh, the, this company can use an on-premises deployment of a hybrid cloud architecture that has the same APIs and portals. I talked about those earlier, right? Software-defined APIs and portals. Deploy that exact same application to a bespoke private cloud that allows them to run the same tools, run the same architecture, have the same operations experience, all with the exact same set of technologies. So this is an example of where the, the power of cloud and having that consistent experience across public and private allows you to build things in a very efficient manner and deploy it fit for purpose. So these are a couple examples. Um, hopefully this was valuable for you. Um, this has been a great journey with us uh, collectively, uh, with Microsoft, and we're looking forward to continue our journey now with QCT. Thank you.